Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, and Shinrin Yoku. Bringing you a grand solar minimum update Saturday, October 30th, Halloween Eve, 2021, around 9 p.m. Mountain Time. And we are live over at La Palma, where activity has been simmering down, as we've been predicting for days. The activity continues to simmer down a bit after a very strange paroxysm earlier today of huge amounts of cinders and ash. But we'll get to that later in the podcast. The big story, hundreds of thousands without power after freak storm ravages Victoria. Have you heard? Well, you're going to hear it now. More than 300,000 Victorians are still without power. Some residents may be in the dark until Monday after a destructive storm brought down power lines and tore roofs off and houses overnight. That was their plight. Take a look at those trees. The destruction, well, is significant, says MSD Ambrosio. The power companies are out there and are making very strong progress in getting people back to the supply. But that looks like, well, keep calm. It's boom time. Back to the U.S. Winter weather closes Mount Mitchell in North Carolina on Thursday. More snow reported on Saturday. Whew, which is Saturday here. Snow chances increasing this weekend for the Rockies. Here are your local totals from Friday. Four inches in the Bighorns. Three inches in Cook City, Montana. A couple inches over there in Gallatin, Montana. Nine, Montana picked up three. Dayton. Just an inch, just a dusting. Colder and cloudy Sunday with snowfall increasing Sunday night into Monday into Nebraska. Yes, they can kiss my... We're going to get to the forecast in a minute. Could the pattern flip? Usher in snow in the Midwest and the Northeast like a beast? Well, yes, it will. And there is your GFS model through November 15th. Like a queen. Is that even a thing? That's like a queef and a queen together. A queen. All right, so let's walk it through. Here is your spooky forecast. Yes, that is through your Halloween. It's only going to be snowing here in Wyoming, a little bit in Montana, a little pinch here in uh, the state of Oregon. But most people aren't going to see a white Halloween. But let's take a look. Wednesday, November 3rd, snow is going to be moving to the northeast, the lake effect system. And then boom, right there. November 4th and 5th, we have an Appalachian system that's going to move up. This is the, some of the first snow for Michigan, some of the first snow for the Appalachians. Well, and in the Northeast, like a beast. More snow is going to be moving into the Rockies after that, in the November 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th, bringing much-needed snow to all the ski resorts all the way down into the Sierras, yes. By November 10th, the Sierras are going to be picking up their second package of heavy snow. Ho, ho, ho. Santa's coming early. Majority of the U.S. states are now forecast for snow by mid-November. We just showed you some of them. As the sun releases its first, well, earth-facing X-flare in years. And we're all waiting for the huge solar storm. Aurora Borealis could be visible in wide swaths of the continental U.S., Europe, on Saturday because of this large solar storm. But it is currently a fizzler. And we're going to get to all the details. Buckle your seatbelts. Now the forecast was for KP7 today, but we just hit KP4 at the end of the day, UTC. And we're waiting for the next set of data. But based on all telemetry, here are all the K indices. Just two stations hitting four. The college station only hitting KP2. And the Boulder station where I'm at, only at KP3. There is no activity in the A stations. Barely a rise off of the graph. So it's looking like a fizzler. However, take a look at the high frequency uh, absorption here. This is a uh, not normal x-ray background. In fact, it's a sizzler in the Southern Hemisphere. So there's tons of energy now coming in to the planet as we speak. And we had a bump here. There's definitely, here is what appears to be um, the CME hitting us, the first wave, which is completely insignificant, ba barely a bump in density. And the plasma, the speed has only gotten up to 400 kilometers per second, has dropped off. Um, the phi angle is at a very dangerous area at 180, so we could be looking for some large seismic activity, but not with this space weather. It's almost insignificant. The, the BZ has leveled out to nothing. So we may be waiting for a secondary wave. 
Now, what we're looking at here is the ghost proton flux, and you can see here those lower level protons, and I just refreshed this, are kicking up a notch. It appeared as if the high level protons were turning up a little, but everything is still going down. And even the aurora forecast in the last three hours has been, it was a little brighter a bit ago, but it is nothing. So we might have a nothing burger. But here we're going to look at the three-day geomagnetic forecast still coming out. Here's October 31st. We could peak up to KP7 from UTC 6 to 12. So maybe the uh, CME is a little slower. And what we're seeing here come is actually the coronal whole stream first. Where is that solar? Where is the solar wind? There it is. This could be the color. So this is the coronal whole stream we thought was coupling here. Um, but it could actually be really coupling here. So it could be a process and we could be waiting for a huge shock. But it could be that this is a fizzler. Or there was an initial blast that we're seeing just the initial shell and the actual density is getting here. The density is dropping off so precipitously, I don't see how the KP is going to kick up anytime soon or the aurora. So it's a fizzler if you're waiting for aurora, unfortunately. Now let's go over to some seismic activity. USGS says no reports of earthquakes after hundreds of Lake County residents in Illinois near the New Madrid report a loud rumble. This is today. 250 people submitted user reports, and the USGS is baffled. And this is right here in the New Madrid zone. So we're going to be keeping a close eye on it. A lot of weird things are afoot. And I'm a foot man, so. Seismic update. No quakes of note. Most recent activity here in the Caribbean. But all is quiet on the Western Front. And guys, if anything changes with the uh, solar storm, trust me, we're going to do an update immediately over at Magnetic Reversal News tonight. So we're going to be watching it for several more hours, hours of hours before we go to bed. But let's move on and get to Worldwide Volcano News Update. Fuego, Semaru, Reventador, Suanosima. Both puffing and passing to 14,000 feet or so. Reventador at 15,000, Fuego to 15. And now we have the La Palma update, yes. Uh, we did an update earlier today. Not much has changed. Well, actually, a lot has changed. There has been more reduction in activity, and we'll get to that. Now, in the last 24 hours, exactly 24 hours ago as I'm speaking, there was a five-magnitude quake, the largest quake in the series. But this may uh, not be as significant as we think because what's been happening, and we'll get to that. We're going to get to the 3D model for you in just the last 24 hours. Less than 100 quakes have occurred, which is great news. So just 99 quakes now, with that five magnitude being the largest in the last 24 hours, right there. And if we go look at the 3D telemetry here, for the subsurface over at La Palma, what we're seeing is a complete breakdown in seismicity, which is amazing news. And also, the, the volcano itself is looking a little funny today. We're also going to link you to all the Institut Geografico Nacional with all the micro seismo, including that five magnitude right there, that red blip. And we're gonna look at the micro, we're gonna look at the seismic tremor. And the tremor is falling off a cliff right now. We're here live. It's some of the lowest levels it has been since the beginning of the eruption. And it has been dropping off since it got a little jiggy over the last few days. So good news with the seismic tremor. That means less lava is coming out. And with the 3D graphs we have here, less earthquakes total. So almost no, no earthquake activity and seismic tremor is at some of the lowest levels now, right now, as we make the video. So all good news that this, well, eruption could be coming to a close. Let's just go here and let's soak it in for a minute live over at the volcano. Now, what we have seen today is some spectacular accumulation of ash and cinders, which you see up in the top right corner there of the video graphic. It is day 42 of the eruption. 
The longest eruption uh, in recent memory of the last two eruptions is the 49 eruption, which lasted 49 days or 47 days. So based on the activity we're looking at here and historical data, we could be seeing an end to this in the next week. And that's our position. It's been at our position for several weeks now that this volcano is not anything historically significant other than the fact that the output of the lava is slightly bigger than the last two eruptions. So this is now the largest eruption in actually about a thousand years on La Palma. But there have been about 10 eruptions in that time and they're all about the same size, duration and vigor. So there's that. Just watch this for a few more minutes. Sulfur dioxide map here on the top right. So anyone here in uh, northwestern Africa is absolutely getting pummeled with some of the worst air they could possibly be breathing. All right, but good news that it looks like the La Palma eruption is quieting down for now. It could pick up tomorrow because it's a process to shut down a volcano. Trust me. Well, and you can trust me as much as you trust the Big Bang hypothesis. We now know the Big Bang theory is probably not how the universe began. Probably? <laughs> yeah, probably not. This tubular picture that you're shown, time immemorial, is more nonsense than you know. And that's why you watch our channel for actual information and white screens. Now, talking about the Big Bang, let's get to something significant here. The rare penis plant. I know you all have been wondering about this. This is headline has been circling for days. The rare penis plant just bloomed for the first time in over two decades. Now, here's the funny thing. <laughs> the plant that's blooming is only seven years old but it's the first one to bloom in a botanical garden in two decades. So the headline is very misleading. The plant itself that bloomed with the big penis is only seven years old. So these people, these women are actually pedophiles taking pictures of the big erect penis of the seven-year-old penis plant. This is why I love the work we do. Scientific knowledge is, well, direct power to the people. And the women love it. <laughs> Did I tell you guys that happy birds fly higher? Happybirdseed.com. Happybirdseed.com. And if you heard the myth that for the next just about 24 hours, hours of powers, if you use coupon code LOVE39, well, you could potentially get 39% off. That's a boom. The knowledge. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. In a dystopian world where only diamond can share the love, like happy birdseed and the penis plant, all in 13 minutes. Well, and all the rest of the news you need to know. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Share this with like-minded people. Be safe. We love you. That's a boom. The knowledge. Click on one of the other boxes to gain more of it. And we'll see you on Magnetic Reversal News as soon as we hit KP6. Maybe 7.